Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearlism, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls List. And today, we're going to run down all the remaining free agents, and I'm going to make my prediction and maybe talk about where I've heard a lot. All of them are going to be going because tomorrow is one of the finest days in the land, isn't it? The 28th free agent day. I'll be doing a marathon on my channel. Uh, my the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, as you see in the bottom there, uh, tomorrow starting at nine o'clock in the morning until about two o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be going straight, and we'll be talking free agents for days. But we're going to go through every one available, and we're going to see how it all turns out. Wait till the end. Uh, also, I have a little message for where we're going as a channel, and I, we're going to do what's called a Perlo dance. If you don't know what that is, I don't know how you don't know. But it's going to be all over the land eventually, so you should probably learn how to do it. Uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network, go check it out, www.steelflyers.com. Do you like all, all the major sports in America, the four major sports, and some teams on those four major sports? Well, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network because it is... It takes care of all of your needs in those areas. We are building too. We need, we're looking for content creators. So if you're that type of person to be able to do that sort of thing, let us know on the bottom there. You can make a little money. And the bigger we grow, the more you make and the more we make. And it's going to be amazing. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as well. All right, let's go into it. I'm going to give her a shot here. Uh, this is all on the fly one take, by the way. All on the fly one take. I'm a busy guy. I got naps to get in. Uh, I have uh, my show. Yeah, that's it. It keeps me pretty busy. Just write that. There we go. Okay, so the first one right at the top here. We got Ryan Getzloff. Uh, now, I... I think everybody in the land thought Ryan Getzloff was going back to Anaheim. But today, there were some some scuttlebutt on Twitter and rumors. And mostly, these are Drager and, uh, you know, guy, you know all the guys there uh, that uh, bring out these these rumors that are usually have a lot of weight to them. Um, so, the talk is that he might be considering leaving Anaheim and one of the teams I've heard that are very very interested is the Edmonton Oilers but I don't know if he'd be interested in going to the Edmonton Oilers or what have you but I think he would like to stay in the west and I don't really see any other spot for him in the west besides maybe Minnesota or something like that if you can think of another team that he may go to but off the top of my head I can't think of anyone else that he would go to. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers could sure use a third-line center. Uh, maybe it's just a financial thing. He's just pining for a little more money out of Anaheim. I don't know. I honestly, only for family reasons, would he be going back to Anaheim because Anaheim doesn't have a chance next year. If he wanted to win a cup, he might be able to do so with Edmonton. I don't know. He certainly would give them a better chance. Zach Parise. The talk about Zach per in with Zach Parise has been that he was going to go to the Islanders with the one below him here in Ryan Suter. And uh, that has been kind of squashed from what I understand. It's not very likely that that's going to be the case. Um, they talked about it, apparently, and they thought it was a pretty fun idea. But as it turns out, it doesn't look like it's going to. I'm going to move this over, see if we can get the money these guys are making. There we go. Um, he, at, they were both making the exact same amount of money, 7-5. Neither one of them are probably going to get that. But where I've heard him going again was the Islanders. I heard Suter would, could, would be going to the Islanders. I've also heard the Edmonton Oilers. I've also heard him going back to New Jersey. Um, I think Parise could go to a lot of teams that have a chance. I could see the Dallas Stars. Um, I'm going to lean here that he 
doesn't stray far away from Minnesota and signs like a eight nine hundred thousand in Edmonton. I'm gonna, that I just have a feeling he wants to stay in that Minnesota area. Ryan Suter, I, I mentioned this before. I thought Boston was the perfect spot for him. Um, it, it's it's closer to Wisconsin than uh, the other option in on the island. Uh, New York Islanders are the ones that ha, are have also been in on him. I haven't heard anybody else. Uh, slightly New York Rangers. Um, but for the most part, those are the two teams I've heard the most about go- him going to. Um, I would think that uh, it's up to, I mean, obviously it's up to him. Um, I think he'd have a, a better spot in Boston. but And they have, I think, a little more money to offer. Uh, I hear, though, I will say that uh, it was for $5 million for four years. He's a 36-year-old man. Thirty, Yeah, 36, till he's 40 years old. Zach Parise, I believe, will be like a million dollars, somewhere like that. I doubt it'll be more than that. Uh, David Krejci, now of the $7 million. I can't see him not going to Boston. Um, I know there's teams out there that are lining up for him if for some reason Boston can't sign him. Uh, but I don't see any other centers out here that, in, on the free agent market that Boston can fill in that's going to do a better job than Krejci did already. Plus, he had chemistry with Hall. I think this is just pining uh, for more money, and maybe he wants to go check the market so he can say, hey, this team will give me this, this team will give me this. Uh, will you give me that? And I think Boston's in a position where they almost have to give him what he wants. Uh, that's my take on that. Uh, Derek Stepan, I've heard Philadelphia. I know Philadelphia is looking for a third-line center. Um, although, I know he was kind of upset when he had to go to Ottawa all the way from Arizona. So I find it odd that he would go to Philadelphia all the way from Arizona. He's a strong family man. It would probably only be for one year for like a million dollars or less. Um, I have a feeling when all things are said and done he, that he stays in Arizona. It just signs million-dollar contracts in Arizona. He would have to give up his dream to win a cup, but um, family would come first in that situation. Um, besides that, I, I would say that Philadelphia would be a, one of the better places for him. Uh, Keith Yandel, we know, just signed a $900,000 contract with the Philadelphia Flyers. Philadelphia Flyers are all over right now. They've stacked up their defense, and they're ready to go. Alexander Edler, I have not heard anything about Alexander Edler so far. Um, I, I'm almost to the point where I think maybe he might be in retirement mode. However, uh, if he wants to go somewhere, Minnesota seems like a place that might. They lost a couple defensemen. Uh, giving up Suter, but it doesn't really make sense to give up Suter and then go ahead and uh, grab uh, Adler, unless it was for a heck of a lot cheaper, I suppose. Uh, but they, they do need another defenseman. and They've lost uh, Susie, and they've lost, of course, Suter. So it would make sense to me that he would go there. Um, besides that, there's not too many places that I can think of that he would be. He's going to want to go somewhere where he can at least pretend that he can win a cup, I'm pretty sure. And I imagine he would want to stay out west. Uh, so I think Minnesota would be the best bet out of out of that. Let me go to the next one here now. Uh, Brendan Saad. I've heard Brendan Saad all over the place. Um, from what I understand, he'd really, really, really like to stay in Colorado. However, Colorado have a have a lot of players to sign, one of them being next year with McKinnon. Um, they still have to st- sign Landis Gog. It's possible that they already have a deal in place and they're just waiting for the Landis, Landis Gog situation to get finished and he could sign in Colorado. But the biggest one I've heard is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh uh, has been um, probably the most prominent 
team I've heard as far as Brandon Saad is concerned. The question is, he's making 28 years, he's 28 years old. Yeah, he, he made six million last year. He had kind of a down year, but he's still on a 30 goal pace. I don't think he's going to make much less than that, uh, unless he takes a discount in Colorado. So I don't know if Pittsburgh would be able to do that very well. I've heard him going back to Chicago. I've heard the Edmonton Oilers. I've heard the Boston Bruins. And uh, the Boston Bruins makes a lot of sense if they can fit him under the cap. Uh, they they got to be going for it this year. There's no reason for them not to basically cap out and go for it. Their window is closing, and I don't see it uh, getting any wider soon. Um, those are the teams that I've heard for uh, Brandon Saad. I've also heard teams like New Jersey, possibly Detroit, but I just can't see him going to a place where they're rebuilding. Um, Brandon Dubinsky, I'm guessing, will retire. Dougie Hamilton, the team I'm hearing more and more is uh, New Jersey uh, at $9 million a year for seven years, I believe it was. This is what I've heard. I did a video not long ago about doing pretty much what I'm doing right now. And uh, I said that it was most likely to me, on paper anyways, that New Jersey would be the place. Watch out for Montreal, though, um, with, uh, with uh, them having injuries, Weber being injured for the, for the year, um, possibly retirement for life. I could see them being in on Dougie Hamilton as well. Um, I, th I thought maybe the Jets, uh, there was a possibility of LA, but the team that's most capable of giving him a $9 million contract and needs defensemen probably the most out of teams that can't afford to do that would be the New Jersey Devils. Uh, Travis Zajac, I think you're going to, he's going to wait it out and just sign a league minimum with the Islanders. He's lived in that area his whole life. Um, the other thing you could do is go back to New Jersey again. There has been talk about Toronto offering him a contract. That would make some sense as well. That would be the teams that I'm most hearing about Zajac. Um, Alexander Steen retires. Meniskanen is retired. James Neal gets bought out by the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, he was making 5.7. Um, a team will probably give him a shot, but I honestly don't know where you're going to put him. In your lineup he's not what you call a leader he's not a guy that has treated himself well as far as uh, an athlete is concerned in conditioning terms so he's going to play um, on your on a team's power play in bottom six minutes although he's not a bottom six player I don't know honestly I have no idea who's going to have use for him possibly go to Arizona they're looking for bodies to fill out their roster that would be where I would say. Martin Jones could spot out for this by the San Jose Sharks. Uh, if you didn't know that already, it happened today. They bought out Martin Jones, and he goes out as a free agent. Now, um, somebody will give him a million or something like that to be a backup. Uh, a team, I think maybe Boston. He was in Boston before he got traded to San Jose. Uh, they could see if he works out there until Rask comes back. Sign him to, uh, he might have to sign an actual league minimum. He's been that bad for the last two or three years. And bought, and if it doesn't work out, when Rask comes back, he can go try his plate in the minors. Or if he does do well, they can use him as a trade piece, possibly to get a draft pick from somebody else. That would be my guess for Martin Jones. Gabriel Landeskog, I can't believe he's not going to sign in Colorado. I just think that... Uh, that Joe Sackick is really taking a long time to get this contract to where he wants it to be. However, if he doesn't sign there, I've heard, um, again, the Islanders, I'm going to go here because I I'm going to go back to teams here. I've heard the Islanders, I've heard the St. Louis Blues. Uh, I've heard the St. Louis Blues for Saad too, by the way. Um, pretty much any team that can afford them, to tell you the honest truth would be lining up to get him. Calgary Flames, if he wants to go there. I don't know why he would want to go there. But the ones that make the most sense are the Islanders, the Montreal Canadiens, the St. Louis Blues. 
uh, they are teams that would could really would love to have that type of leadership. He's a perfect type of player for the Islanders. I also heard the Kraken, but I just find that difficult to believe he would go to Seattle in the uh, in the case where it. I don't think Seattle's going to be a cup continuing team for quite some time, but I could be wrong. That could be the place. I mean, a lot of players are flocking over there. Ron Francis is one heck of a good guy to work for. So that could be the reason why a lot of play, t- players are heading his direction. Oh, look at this. Okay, try this again. Next one. Nick Felino going to Minnesota. Almost assuredly he's going to Minnesota. Uh, I've heard pretty much from everybody that Minnesota is where Nick Felino is going. Uh, Alex Goligoski, uh, that would be a place for Toronto, I think. Um, I think Goligoski still got a lot of legs left in those 35-year legs, even though he was all, he was making four million last year. He certainly won't be making that this year. Um, that would be my best bet for Goligoski. Jaden Schwartz, he's going to Seattle apparently, so that's another reason why Landeskog wouldn't be going there because Jaden Schwartz is almost assuredly going to Seattle, uh, which had me wondering if St. Louis was going to be rebuilded. I said this before that if Jaden Swartz uh, goes to, or not goes to Seattle, but didn't sign in St. Louis, I do believe that St. Louis will rebuild. Uh, Thomas Tatar, Miri, I think if I have a feeling Tatar, if you notice the, like the in Vegas, they didn't play him in the playoffs. Montreal, he didn't play in the playoffs. Apparently, it was because of injury. I think a lot of teams are pretty suspect on him as a playoff performer. I think that my guess is Arizona again. He's going to sign a two-year deal or something like that in Arizona. Uh, I think teams want to see more of Tatar, even though he's at 30 years old, to be able to give him the contract that he wants. Besides that, I've heard the Edmonton Oilers, I sure hope not. I've heard the Pittsburgh Penguins, I, I sure hope not. On a uh, Well, I don't care if he goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I've heard the Anaheim Ducks. Um, but he's really soft, man. He's a soft player. And streaky goal scorer. He had, what, 10 goals, 20 assists, 30 points in 50 games. as a top six forward. That is not good enough. And that's the thing. He can only play in your top six and is not a great top six performer. I think he goes either to Arizona and another one, look at Detroit possibly. Frederick Anderson, I don't know until we find out if he's injured or not. I haven't heard anything. Is he injured? Is he not injured? Is he ready to play next year? Toronto has said that they're interested in having him back, but I imagine it won't be for what he made last year uh, and, and probably nowhere else that he may go. Um. Teams that I've heard, again, I've heard the Pittsburgh Penguins. I've heard Carolina when it comes to Frederick Anderson. I've heard Edmonton Oilers, but now they haven't, for some reason, bought out Koskinen, so maybe not. Um, but wherever he's going, I've heard the San Jose Sharks, which makes sense. Uh, that would be my most likely scenario is the San Jose Sharks really need to take risks here. They have a lineup that, Probably isn't good enough to make the playoffs, maybe. Uh, Especially unless they can upgrade their goaltending. They could take a risk on Anderson being okay. And Anderson might be good enough to get him into the playoffs. So that would be my guess. Tyler Bozak. um, I haven't heard anything about Tyler Bozak. He's 35 years old. Um, The Edmonton Oilers need a center. I could see that at $2 million. Uh, Maybe back to Toronto. I think he'll probably get about $2 million somewhere. Uh, But I'm not really sure. You notice I'm saying the same teams all the time because these teams seem to be the most uh, active in uh, the free agent market. 
Uh, Tony D'Angelo, I'm here in Montreal, and I heard a thing until I saw that thing on Tony D'Angelo, and I wouldn't doubt that Tony D'Angelo was getting black, uh, blacklisted for reasons. Like, if you knew the real whole story, you'd be like, really? That Really? I would not doubt that at all. And same as that kid that they picked up from Montreal, the first overall pick. He himself said it was a bad mistake. I don't know what it was, but when... I don't think Bergevin's a jerk off. I think he heard the story and said, "Yeah, that's not great, dude, but you are you seem to have a you know, repented heart. You have an opportunity to be a voice to the young boy young men out there to be able to treat women in with respect. And you had a mistake to be able to say, "Look, I did it and I know I can turn things around here." Uh so, but I don't know the whole story behind it, but with D'Angelo, it seems like he got blacklisted in a way that wasn't fair. However, he did, you know, he was in Arizona and he got booted out of there. Now he's in Montreal and he gets booted out of there. So, I don't know. Kyle Parmieri, um, I'm hearing New Jersey's going to, our New York Islanders are going to sign him back and I'm going with that. Ryan Murray, um, I would think he would stay in New Jersey. However, I haven't heard anything about him either. I think he's going to be a late summer pickup by somebody that didn't get somebody they want. Um, and maybe maybe the Toronto Maple Leafs. You got to look at... Uh, also, I could see him going to the Winnipeg Jets. Who just uh, traded for Dylan? Uh, Ryan Murray's a good defensive defenseman. Uh, he probably would just like to find a home somewhere after being injured a lot this year. So, uh, Marcus Johansson in Minnesota, he's one of those guys you can fit in anywhere. I could really see him going anywhere. Uh, Brandon Sutter, I think he'll stay in Vancouver for a small amount. Brandon Smith, again, one of those guys, adept guys that could just go anywhere. Braden Polfi got bought out. I don't see him going anywhere. He's he's got a his he. I've always said that I was he had a questionable attitude, and from seeing what he did some of the times on the ice with Vancouver, with calling guys out on the bench and stuff like that, and I noticed it in Washington as well, that he could really have a hard time finding a spot. Uh, Ian Cole, I think he stays in Minnesota. David Savard, I'm hearing Montreal. Montreal, Montreal, Montreal all day. Um, for sure, he's almost going there. Antti Ranta, somebody, he's going to have to take a league minimum somewhere. He's just way too injured. Uh, he'll, he might even get a, uh, a tryout. Seriously, it's that bad. He's just been injured so much. Nick Benino, Philadelphia, Edmonton. Uh, yeah, uh, Matthew Perot, I bet he stays in Winnipeg. Alec Martinez, Vegas. He's going to sign in Vegas. I hear three years at $5 million. Mike Hoffman apparently is looking for a $5 million a year contract from somewhere. And about the only place he's going to get that from, because I think everybody in the league is aware now that he's just a power play guy. He's terrible defensively. Um, pretty soft. The only way he's going to get that is if he goes to a team that's trying to hit the floor, like Detroit. Or, you know, some of the bottom feeders, Arizona, something like that. Otherwise, he's not even going to get close to that, I don't believe. We'll see. Uh, Brandon Montour. Um, again, I, I like him for Arizona. Michael Granlin, I think he goes back to Nashville. Tyson Berry, I have no idea where Tyson Berry is going to go. But I'm going to, I have to pick some place. So I'm going to say he goes back to Edmonton, and I'm going to throw up on my mouth a little bit while I do it. He's terrible defensively. He's not what they need at all. Uh, Jason Reimer, another potential Boston pickup. Uh, Ryan Dezingle, um, I think he stays in Ottawa. He likes it there. They like him there. They just got to find a number that's going to make sense. And Casey Zizekas is apparently looking for $5 million a year. To tell you the, I really have no idea what he's going to get for five. Who's going to pay uh, a guy that he thinks he's a third line center? Somebody's got to think he's a third line center. 
in the mold of like Dan O. And I didn't notice that I skip over Dan O because I hear Dan O is going to LA. LA. So that's where I've heard Dan O is going to. Uh, but who's going to pay Sezikis that kind of money? Calgary. The Calgary Flames will probably pay Sezikis that kind of money. Um, I think that's all I got. That's my full 42, boys and girls. That's who I th where I think everybody's going. Tell me what you think out there. Where do you think that these guys are going in the comments section? And uh, that's, oh, man, I went a long time there. I'm going to give you my full 42 now. I, uh, a little Perlo dance. Oops. Let me go back here. Perlo dance for the land. And for hitting the subscribe and the bell, thank you very much for getting up there in, uh, getting up to 1,000 followers. What we're doing is, as I grow, as this grows, as the Steel Flyers All Sports Network grows, go over there, check that out as well. Um, we have sponsors over there, and uh, it's, it's a really exciting uh, website that's growing and growing and growing. We're going to get ourselves a pearl of wisdom, our pearl uh, jet. Pearl O'Brawl, a Jet O'Brawl, oh my gosh, I can't even say it. I'm going to come to all the lands. I'm going to see you guys. And we're going to Pearl dance together at arenas. Watch every game. That is my, that's in here. That's happening. It's happening right now. And you're contributing to us being able to do that by hitting the subscribe button. You guys are awesome. Thanks for uh, listening. Until tomorrow, free agency. Woo! marathon from 9 till 2 uh, which would be 11 till 4 eastern time we're going to go hard it's the finest day in the land okay bye